The College Basketball Experience St. John's Red Storm Season Preview Episode for 2022-23 on the Sports Gambling Podcast Networks presented by WinBet. Bet $100 at WinBet and get a $100 free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W-Y-N-N-B-E-T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by the SGPN merch store. Use the promo code NFC beast for 15% off active until the Eagles or giants lose their next game and make sure to enter our world series prop contest. Winner gets $200 cash and a $200 gift card to the SGPN merch store. Yes. Enter today exclusively on the SGPN app, which is free to download in the app store, Google play store. Do that today. And remember folks to let it ride. Hey, this is John Sally, and you listen to SGPN. Let it ride. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to the College Basketball Experience, St. John's Red Storm 2022-23 season preview episode. My name is Colby Swingin' Dan to Base Dan, a.k.a. Pick Dundee. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I smoke and I drink and um, I don't have stress and I'm healthy. (laughs) Cannot wait to watch some St. John's basketball. Been a a fan. I mean, look, they go back. They're old school biggies to the days of Mark Jackson, Chris Mullen, Walter Berry. Those were the days, even all the way to the Felipe Lopez, Sean L. Scott days. I mean, just a lot of great years. I remember LeVar Postel. Remember him? He was a beast. And obviously, Ron Artest. Uh, But it's critical. It's a critical year. Uh, I think your average St. John's fan would probably tell you that because you do have Mike Anderson at head coach. Now, I like Mike Anderson. I like the hire. I thought it made sense. However... Um, and I know he had a battle through COVID. And I think all of these things need to be talked about because it was tough through COVID. Hurts your recruiting. Obviously, limitations, especially in New York City, a little bit different than, say, at Oklahoma. I don't know if any of you guys traveled during COVID. I, I did. I went to Arizona and Oklahoma and shit, and it was like it was another day. I live in Los Angeles, and, you know, you couldn't even <laughs> couldn't even get yourself a a gallon of water or something, you know, it was tough. Everything was closed. Same with New York city. So, uh, I do think there's more challenges for Mike Anderson than your traditional college basketball coach, but he is entering his fourth year. It's critical. They're, they're 50 and 41. And if you look at last season, you know, that team was pretty good. I think that team was pretty good. The big East is loaded. As we know, I know, uh, you know, they didn't make the NCAA tournament. And when you look at, at why they didn't make the NCAA tournament, because statistically, if you pull up a lot of the numbers, they'll tell you St. John's wasn't a, a an awful team. I mean, um, it's just they, they lost all these close games. And I think that is something maybe perhaps you, you, you – sometimes you just get the wrong bounce. I know they had some experience on that team. just didn't work out. Um, but, I mean, they led, they led the nation in tempo a season ago. Um, and they led the Big East in a defensive turnover rate. When you, you would think just looking at those numbers, hey, this team's legit. No, they didn't make the NCAA tournament. Uh, finished 17 and 15, just 8 and 11 in the Big East. And uh, 3 and 9 in games decided by 6 points or fewer. And Mike Anderson, I mean, it'll be interesting to see if they make the NCAA tournament this year. We're going to look at that. We're going to project the starting five. But... The question would be, I think, it, would he be given a fifth year? Uh, either way, we are right around the corner from Big East play and then, or, you know, from college basketball season. Big East play, though, is one of the earlier conference uh, slates to start battling within conference. 
we will get to all that. But uh, it's going to be an interesting year there in Queens, you know, and I think uh, one of the more interesting things about looking at this roster is what they lose because they lose uh, about 40 points per game from a season ago. I mean, (laughs) that's saying something right there. Yes, uh, Julian champagne has gone 19 points per game, 6.6 rebounds. Aaron Wheeler, the the transfer, 10 points per game, 4.7 rebounds, gone. Even Steph Smith, another transfer, uh, 6.3 points per game, 1.9 assists per game. And then Tariq Coburn. Those are four key players that that played some some solid amount of time, uh, and they combined for about 40 points per game. That is some some decent losses. So the question is, is can you replace Champagny and Wheeler? I mean, Smith and Coburn were still solid as well. Um. But there is good news, and the good news is is that Posh Alexander's back. And if you had, had if you haven't had a chance to watch Posh p- play ball, I mean, he's one of my favorite players to watch in all the college basketball. Uh, never never takes a, a a series off, in my opinion. He's he, both sides of the court playing the game one hundred and ten percent, which is always beautiful to watch. Uh, Posh Alexander, six foot guard. I mean. If you get a chance, get some eyeballs on him. He was getting 32 minutes a game a season ago. He got 14 points, 4.4 boards, 5.5 assists, 2.3 steals. That's what I'm talking about. He does everything well uh, for the most part. Not a great three-point shooter, though, at 21%. But he's a dog, in my opinion. He is a dog. And, you know, if they can find their way into the NCAA tournament, I think he can pose problems and, and be a shutdown defender on some key players. They also return fifth-year senior and and former uh, Rutgers Scarlet Knight who transferred into St. John's what, last last season, Montez Mathis. Now he got about twenty-four and a half points per, or he got about twenty-four and a half minutes per game a season ago. I do expect him to fall more into uh, the scoring mode this year. Obviously, you know, losing forty points per game. I think it's going to be very interesting to see who can step up. Uh, they also have Joel. Uh, Soriano back, the 6'11 senior who uh, got about 19 minutes a game a season ago. Um, they also have Dylan uh, Adai Wusu, Adai Wusu, who's back. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see. Besides that, also Raphael P- uh, Pinzon, that, that's, that's a guy that I think, uh, you know, impressed in, in certain games last season. Um, so Omar Stanley uh, and uh, I, f- I forget the big fella's name. What is it? Uh, Naiwe. Um, so they do return some production, but the, the main factor is, can you make up for 40 points per game scoring? And can you learn how to win some of these close games? Uh, one thing that is good is that they bring in a couple freshmen that it w- it'll be interesting to watch Mike Anderson and see how he gets these freshman perhaps playing time it'll it'll be very interesting Kobe King uh is one to keep an eye on out of out of Pembroke Pines uh Muhammad Kita uh is is a, a freshman to watch a 7-1 center and then AJ Store out of IMG Academy so they bring in three freshmen I don't know how much PT they will get it'll be something we want to monitor early on with the Red Storm uh but they did they did conquer the transfer portal in my opinion they went out and conquered that thing because they brought in uh, Andre Curbelo from Illinois. And just things didn't seem to be working there in Illinois with Curbelo, but he's extremely talented. Anyone that watched the Illini games could tell you, you know, maybe it, he didn't fit. It was an odd fit, but but he was a talented player. And I think under Mike Anderson's uh, tutelage, he'll probably be able to to find the right footing here in Queens for him to, to really excel, I think. Uh, but the big one to me was getting David Jones from DePaul. A, DePaul is in the Big East. Brutal. So you're dealing a blow to a team that you're going to be playing uh, twice. And, and David Jones, uh, a season ago in Chicago, what, just about 30 minutes per game, 14 and a half points per game, seven and a half boards, two and a half assists, 1.7 steals. So, I mean, when you look at the defensive side of this, I mean, Alexander, Mathis, and Jones are pretty damn good defenders. Um, it'll be it'll be very interesting to watch uh, to this team play night in, night out. 
We're going to project the starting five in a second, but I would certainly say they destroyed the transporter. Just bringing in those two. Absolutely fantastic gets uh, for Mike Anderson. But let's uh, let's talk starting five. But before we do all of that, I want to tell you that the St. John's Red Storm 2022-23 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is presented by WinBet. Bet $100 at WinBet and get a $100 free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W-Y-N-N-B-E-T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by, oh, YouTube. Yes, yeah, Sports Gambling Podcast is giving away your chance to win your choice of either an autographed Lawrence Taylor jersey or an autographed Brian Dawkins jersey. The contest is completely free to enter. Subscribe to youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. Comment on a video and each video is a new chance to win. So turn on your notifications uh, so you don't miss uh, SGP contacting you when they pull out the winner. So, I mean, that's free. LT, Lawrence Taylor. Come on. one of the, I mean, we're talking St. John's here, New York City. And maybe, maybe you're an Eagle fan that's up in New York City. Brian Dawkins. What's... Check it out. Get over to YouTube. And also remember, folks, we're on YouTube, too. YouTube.com slash The College Experience. Subscribe. Tell a friend you can watch us because uh, when the season tips, we will be here uh, every single night of the season talking college basketball games, best bets, also best matchups, just, you know, games that we want to see because uh, we've been handicapping every single uh, D1 basketball game for over five years now. Never had a losing season, but it's more than just gambling sometimes. I mean, sometimes we're just talking best Best man. Oh, can this can this will will uh, Posh Alexander be able to handle, you know, uh, you know, uh, Georgetown's guard, something like that. It, it, you know, it, you just got to you got to tune in and we'll tell you what games are the best games to watch each night. If you're new to college basketball, it's like a a, 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 a key to the to college basketball and how to how to watch it, in my opinion. So subscribe. Also subscribe to the college football experience. But we're back talking St. John's basketball. And if we had to project the starting five. Uh, we, we, I'm going to take a shot on this. I'm going to take a shot on this. I am making the assumption that I, well, I, I know Posh Alexander will be starting Posh Alexander, Andre Curbelo. And I'm assuming now this is where it gets interesting. Do they go Montez Mathis or do they go at a That's going to be something to monitor. Um, I'm going to make the assumption that it's Mathis, but both played around the same amount of time per game a season ago. So it's something to monitor. Uh, then at the four small ball, they're going to play a little small ball here. David Jones, the DePaul transfer. Uh, and then at, at, at the five, Joel Soriano. So uh, I'm making the assumption. Yeah, it's going to be Soriano. I mean, I, I was sitting there thinking, okay, can now you weigh, perhaps find himself in the mix there potentially, but I think it's going to be Soriano, Joel Soriano. Um, I think that's the starting five. The question is on the bench. Then do you have at or do you have Mathis? You also have uh Naiwe, a pin zone uh, and Stanley mix that in with the freshman. And you might have a pretty, I think it's a pretty good roster. I mean, the big East is so loaded. I think it's a pretty good roster. It really matters winning these close games, and we're going to touch base on that in a second here. But honestly, I think it's one of the better rosters talent-wise, probably in the Big East. I mean, obviously Creighton stacked. UConn's looking pretty talented, and then Nova is always disciplined, even when perhaps years they did that they might even lack a little bit of talent. Um, but they're always good. They're always good. But I, I put it right up there with that. I know Xavier's returning a lot a lot of key pieces and they got some guys in the portal. Butler did a good job in the portal. Big East is just a grind. It's just a fucking grind. It's one of the greatest conferences. Um all right, well look, let's let's hop into the schedule. Let's talk let's talk about the uh, Red Storm at a conference schedule here. Um season starts for them on November 7th when Mary Mac comes. Shout out to Mary Mac. Somewhat somewhat new to D1 basketball. That's going to be a dub. That's going to be a dub. They got to come into Queens. Ain't going to happen. All right. Then uh, on Saturday, November 12th, Lafayette comes into Queens. By the way, these are both on Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports 2. Uh, that shouldn't be a challenge. And then you get Central Connecticut State in Queens. You should be 3-0. and And that's something. That's another thing I want to address, though. 
I want to say it was two years ago. I think maybe three that St. John's did not get in because of their out of conference schedule. Something to monitor going forward. Um, I got them three and zero out the gate. Then on November seventeenth, the Gavit tip off games uh, as Fred Hoiberg and Nebraska. And I do expect this to be a, a Hoiberg's best team he's ever had in Nebraska. But even with that, that's not saying a lot. They come into Queens on on uh, November seventeenth. This is on Fox Sports One. I expect Mike Anderson to handle them. Four and zero is four and zero there. Uh, then an interesting matchup: the Empire Classic going on in Brooklyn where they get Aaron McKee's Temple Owls, which I, I do believe this will be his best team at Temple. And it's something to monitor. This is this is a very interesting game, and I think it's one you circle as a St. John's fan. It's in Brooklyn. St. John's will have that much of an advantage that it's right there uh, in, in the NYC area there. So uh, at, at the Barclays Center, oh, man. I, you know what? I'll give this to St. John's, but I, I kind of think it's a 50-50 game. Slight edge, St. John's. Slight edge, St. John's. So that would put them at 5-0. and And then they would get the winner of Syracuse-Richmond. I'm down on Syracuse this year, and I'm a little more down on Richmond compared to last year. Obviously, uh, Richmond made the NCAA tournament and actually won a game in the NCAA tournament, but they lost a couple key pieces from that team a season ago. Those games are on the ESPN, uh, like ESPNU and ESPN2. So, uh, you know, 5-0 and could really happen there. I'm sorry, 6-0 and could really happen there. I think the Temple game is the hardest one. The hardest one. Then uh, uh, at, on November 20, what is that, 28th, they get, uh, I'm sorry, 26th is that, I think. Uh, they get uh, Greg Paulus's Niagara team coming in there. Um, that should be a win. And then on the 29th, they get Rod Strickland, new head coach of the Long Island Sharks. So that's in Queens. I mean, they don't leave the state of New York in all of uh, November. I mean, I think I think this team is going to be undefeated. All the Temple game is everything to me. If they can get past Temple, I think they're better than Syracuse. I think they're better in Richmond. I think they're better in Niagara. I think they're better in Long Island. You know, if anything, you could make the case that none of these teams will make the NCAA tournament. Maybe Richmond. They keep a good program. Maybe Syracuse. Bayheim overachieves often. Uh, maybe Temple, but uh, but I, I kind of think, gun to my head, I don't think any of them are going to the NCAA tournament this year. Uh, that would be, that would put them though three, four, five, six, eight, and zero oh, heading into the month of December. So that would be exciting. Month of December though comes, and you got the Big Twelve Big East battle on December fourth in Ames, Iowa, at the Hilton Coliseum. That game is on ESPN two. This is a key game, a very key game. I got Iowa State winning this. The Big 12 is a grind, but this is a winnable game. This is a winnable game. It's just that place gets absolutely lit. I'll, I'll go. I'll go. That's their first loss. Then they have the early Big East game going on uh, in Queens against DePaul. Remember David Jones's former team, uh, Tony Stubblefield, coming into uh, Queens trying to get a dub. I got to take St. John's there. Like, I think that, that, that's, that's a St. John's win. Then New Hampshire. On December 10th, that should be a win. And then they have the Orange Bowl Basketball Classic in Sunrise, Florida against the Florida State Seminoles. That's another one you circle. To me, if I'm a St. John's fan, at a conference, there's three games that I really want to pay attention to. Temple, Iowa State, and Florida State. Now, yes, obviously, Syracuse could be in that mix. Maybe they're better than what I think they're going to be. Maybe Richmond is. Uh, But... I lean, I, I do lean Florida State there. It's in Florida. They'll have the advantage. Although there's a lot of New Yorkers in Florida, but I, I think Florida State will have that advantage. So out of conference wise, you know, I will put them, what did I say? They were so three, f- six, eight, no, oh, in, in November, eight and one, nine and one. I've got them nine and two out of conference, nine and two out of conference. Let's key in on the rest of the games on the 2022 side, because as you know, college basketball, you know, half your season's in 2022, half's in 2023. Um, uh, right before Christmas, they they head to to uh, Finneran Pavilion to take on the Villanova Wildcats. 
I think that's a loss still. I think the Neptune hire made sense. You know, obviously, though, if there's ever a year, Neptune's only been a head coach. This is it will be his second year. He only he was only at Fordham for one year. I still think that's a tough place to win. I got the Wildcats taking them down. And then on December 28th, Wednesday, they ha- they they host Xavier and, and Sean Miller now back with the Musketeers. That one should be an interesting game because they did bring back some nice pieces and they added a few in the portal. <sighs> That's a true 50-50 game. That is a true 50-50 game. You know what? Sean Miller's first year. Give me St. John's. Let's go. And then on New Year's Eve, wow, it's a great game. Uh, they head to uh, Newark to take on uh, Shaheen Holloway's uh, Seton Hall Pirates. That should be a great matchup. Wow, that's a great New Year's Eve matchup. Uh, I'll give that one to Seton Hall because it's in Seton Hall. All right, so that means I would have them at four losses heading into the new year. I don't think that's that. I don't think that's that bad. I don't think that's that bad. Um, but we'll talk, uh, the, the rest of the conference schedule. I'll go through it. I'm not going to go through every game. I'm going to try to project what is the toughest three game stretch and where can they grab some valuable wins that could be, uh, very important for p- perhaps selection Sunday, you know, uh, in, in early March. Uh, but before I do all that, I want to tell you that the college basketball experience, St. John's red storm preview. It's brought to you by No House Advantage. No House Advantage is changing the game by offering the most dynamic fantasy sports platform available today. You can play a pickup contest versus other people for a shot at winning 250K in cash. Wow. Download the app, choose a contest, select your player props, earn points for corrected picks, and climb up that leaderboard for your shot to win big money every day. You can also test your skills versus the house and win 20 times the amount of money you enter if you hit all your picks. Bet on up to five player prop over unders or individual player matchups across every major sports league, including NFL, NBA, MLB, PGA, MMA, even NASCAR. Sign up now with the promo code SGPN at NoHouseAdvantage.com or download the app on the App Store or Google Play Store to get a first deposit match up to $25. Make sure to check out No House Advantage today and experience daily fantasy sports redefined because it's not just how you play, but where you play and you don't want to miss out on this one. All right, we're back talking Red Storm basketball. Man, I, I like when St. John's is good. I think college basketball is better when St. John's is good. And by the way, can you fucking bring back your football program? Yes. What day and day? I mean, look, growing up, I would catch some some FCS, you know, St. John's football games. They got rid of the football program, but I would argue that that's ridiculous. And now they should bring it back. You're in New York fucking city. The NIL is a brand new day and age. You're in New York City. That sells itself. Start the football program again. Let's get get, start FCS and then go FBS after a couple of years. I'm telling you, you can find a place to play. Come on. Shit, play at the Meadowlands. I don't know. Play at one of those stadiums. They got a bunch there. Come on. Play somewhere. Get your football program together. Anyway, let's talk basketball, though. Uh, The rest of the schedule, all conference games, obviously, uh, and cause they're going, that's another thing. The biggest going to that 20 game conference schedule. It's gauntlet. That is a fucking gauntlet. Uh, toughest stretch in the season to me. There's two that stand out to me. There's two that stand out to me. Wow, man. They have a brutal schedule. I mean, I guess everybody in the big East has a brutal schedule, but to me, uh, a couple that stand out just right out the gate. The good thing is this, is they do get Nova at Nova kind of before the storm, even though I guess they have Florida State before and uh, Xavier after. But once that – I think I'd rather play Nova early on. Neptune's a you know second-year coach. I think they're going to get better as the season goes along. Um, I, I would say the January 15th to January 25th stretch is one that is absolutely bonkers. January 15th, they head to Hartford to take on UConn, Danny Hurley, Sonogo. They're, they're loaded. That, that game's fantastic. UConn's going to be favored. Short of an injury, UConn's going to be favored. If they can find a way to get a dub against a team that's probably going to be a, a high seed, I would think uh, somewhere a top five seed, you know, not overall, but somewhere between one and five, 
Uh, I would imagine UConn will reside when it's all said and done. Villanova, though, on January 20th, comes to Madison Square Garden. These Both those games are on FS1. That is one where, like, you, you okay, you're probably going to lose in Philly. Here's an opportunity to get it. You know, Villanova could very well win the Big East. I get it. Jay Wright's gone. People maybe maybe not that high on them. Everyone's thinking Creighton. Everyone's thinking UConn. I put Nova right in that mix. I think Neptune's the, the, the right guy to fix that or to, to fill that, I should say. Uh, that is a game I think St. John's is capable of winning. And the fact it's at home in, in New York City, uh, that's a resume builder right there. That's one where you say, hey, we deserve to be in the NCAA tournament. We knocked down the Villanova Wildcats. Uh, and then the follow-up game is absolutely brutal. On January 25th, they head to Omaha, Nebraska. A, that's a far trip. B, Creighton is absolutely money at home over the uh, like over the past 10 years, I feel like. Uh, this is at the Health Center. Bring your membership in Omaha, CBS Sports Network. Uh, but that three-game stretch, absolutely fucking brutal. You have three teams that I think will be all top five seeds in the NCAA tournament. But with that comes opportunity. Now, two of those are on the road, so I do think it's probably highly likely that you go one and one and two in that stretch, or maybe even zero and three. So, if I was to pick a better stretch, you know, for perhaps perhaps protecting your home court, it'll probably be February eighteenth to February twenty fifth. February eighteenth, they're home to Creighton. Creighton's a different team on the road. I think you you can definitely win that game. Then you're at Georgetown. Patrick Ewing's team, kind of an enigma. They 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 hire they hire Nickelberry from LSU, the assistant that was there with Will Wade and a slew of transfers come in, including a couple, a couple from LSU. And then, uh, and then, you know, they extend, you know, they keep Ewing. We kind of all figured he was going to be fired. I know he's a legend down there. I know he's a legend in New York city as well. So an interesting game that's at the, uh, in DC on CBS sports network at the Capital one arena. That is a winnable game as well. And then you come home on uh, February 25th, right before the big East tournament, you got, two games left, but uh, second to last game is home against UConn at MSG. That is a winnable game too. So talk about resume building wins and that's your Avenue right there. That three game stretch. I can't wait for it when it's all said and done. And this is, this is extremely hard to do without watching without knowing injuries, but gun to my head, my pecking order for where St. John's would fall. I think I ended up going, uh, you know, everyone's high on Creighton and UConn. I got Nova winning the Big East. I'm going Nova at the one. I'm going Creighton at two. Oh, no, 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 no. I did, not, I did Creighton at three. So I, I did UConn at two, Creighton at three. At four, my surprise team is the Butler Bulldogs. At five, I think it's the Xavier Musketeers. And then at six, this is where it gets really, really close because I feel like St. John's, Seton Hall, and Providence all really close. I mean, all of it, even even all the way up to Butler. I think they're all games. They're all – it's a very thin line between each team. So uh, I'll say – I'll go Xavier, then St. John's. Whew, I don't know. Yeah, keep an eye on those matchups because those matchups are gigantic. The tiebreakers – in that scenario, to me, like Butler, Xavier, St. John's, Seton Hall, and Providence. You got to think Providence won so many close games a season ago, and they lost a lot. Can, will they be able to be that that fortunate again to, to be able to, 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 to win those key games? I know the dunk gets lit, but I kind of think they're going to be in last out of those teams. Then, then it begs the question, I kind of go Butler, Xavier, Give me St. John's, then then Seton Hall, because it's Holloway's first year. Let's go. I can't wait. I cannot wait. I think they make the NCAA tournament this year. They make the NCAA tournament. They get in. Maybe it might be one of the last four in. It might be, you know, uh, a, a, a 12 seed. I don't know. Uh, ten. I mean, a 10 seed, I should say. Um, I think they get it, though. I think this is a big year for Mike Anderson. I, I like the hire. I think it's going to work out. Folks, remember, November 7th, season tips. You'll hear me. And, and, and NC Nick, Patty C, Ryan McIntyre, every single night of the season as we talk college basketball, best bets, also the best games to watch, best matchups, why you should be watching, 
what conference you should be watching. We got you covered. So check it out. Also subscribe to the college football experience. We talk college football year round over there. We talk college basketball year round over here. We come together as one on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. You can even find the college baseball experience on there. Shout out to Noah Beanick. Um, but also uh, check out the sports gambling podcast. You know, the, the thing that started it all, I, they cover everything. You got to check it out. Uh, check out the NFL gambling podcast. Check out the, I mean, NBA gambling podcast, NHL gambling podcast. We got uh, just a, a great team. MLB gambling podcast. We got it all. All right. Check it out. Get the SGPN app in the app store, Google play store. That is free to download. And also come talk sports with the sports gambling podcast.com slash discord. Doesn't matter the sport. I mean, I'm in the college football, college basketball all, all day. I feel like NFL, if they have games going on, we're hopping in there. It's like a house party of DJs or just they have sports fans. So hop on in, chat it up with us. A lot of fun. Uh, do all that. And man, I cannot wait for the season. It's right around the corner, folks. All right. This is the college basketball experience. St. John's Red Storm style. You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here. <laughs>